Welcome, welcome back, everyone. I do apologize for my impromptu absence, um, but as I stated, I had some work I really needed to finish. I, uh, you know, after I wasn't well over the Christmas season, some work piled up, so I had to get that done. I also took the opportunity to do a few changes to the channel, as you saw. New intro, new logo new banner just uh so just let me know in the comments what you think about it um uh, you know I, I will try to make sure i do stuff that that you know you guys like and i appreciate you all so much so that's why i do this but uh you know let's dive right into this today because echo dropped a few days ago and yeah i gotta get into that one okay so as you would expect with Marvel's latest MCU show, because that's exactly what it is, they're already trying to make it seem like, you know, it's actually doing much better than it is. Rotten Tomato has it here, uh, um, a review of uh, a critic score of 72%, audience score of 68%, making it seem like, you know, the show is actually pretty okay and, and that people are actually enjoying it. Let's take a look at some of the, there are only five episodes, because if you remember, I did a video, I talked about how when Kevin Feige and them saw Echo, they almost gave it the Batgirl treatment because it was so horrendous. So they decided to cut out like half the episodes, just quickly stitch, cut and paste together what was left and release all the episodes on one day. So, of course, you know, people are out there trying to, trying to shill for it, but that's kind of what you come to expect. Let's see, we have um, some of the critics here. New York Times says, um, The show wants Maya to be a human being rather than a superhero, but can't get out of the habit of writing her as a construct instead of a character. And next one here, another New York magazine, um, Echo resists pandering in its celebration of female, indigenous, and disabled identities, keeping it all rooted in character movements that are organic and well-earned. One thing I've, I've realized about all these positive reviews, like even this one, a window into American Indian culture and heritage. Um... Um, next one here, the light that is like his protagonist is eccentric, smart, a little dark, lovely, just five episodes long and not tied to the MCU saga, this action thriller series may not be a masterpiece, but it's tight, fun, and okay, um, when the, when the show is slow, it's to make sure the audience knows what's going on behind Maya's tactile face. What eventually makes the character of Maya and Cockle Foreman so compelling is the gritty human realism brought to the role. Um, the the um, Alakua Cox shines as Echo in this first Marvel Spotlight series. Echo is not a great show, but there's enough there to keep viewers interested. I, I mean, the thing about it is that all these positive comments that I have seen for the show try to dance around the fact they either try to talk about the, 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 the um, you know, the American Indian uh, um, inclusion. They talk about how the, how, how, the, how the actress who played Echo is so brave and stunning and amazing. Then, then you hear them say that, you know, okay, the show isn't perfect, it's a little slow thing, but it kind of hangs in there, so it's not bad. And you're like, okay. But you have, then you have, um, um, Comments like this, Marvel Studios is running on empty, an imbalance between vivid, powerful cultural imagery and scattered storytelling. So it's, it's really not, it's really not looking, in my opinion, all that good. But this, this are the audience scores and, and critic score over here on Rotten Tomatoes, the Rotten Tomatoes really. But is this actually what the fans are thinking in regards to Echo? My thought on it is no, because I called this very early on when it came to the show. I said this is going to be a horrendous display of absolute nonsense. I haven't watched it. I have no interest in watching this because from the information that I got, I know I'm not going to like it and I don't want to put myself through that. I could already see what, was, what this was going to be and turns out I'm actually right. This article here from Fandom Pulse. 
Marvel's Echo dropped on Disney Plus and shows once again MCU creators have zero respect for their fans with maximum girl boss achieved. Color me surprised. That's all because I mean you don't even have to to to, to, to even doubt it anymore that Marvel is pushing this MCU agenda hard and that they, they really have no intention of ever stopping. Uh, Marvel's latest diversity project here yeah, because they need that more than anything. Echo premiered on Disney Plus this week, marking a first for a Disney Plus show in two regards. It's the first MCU program to have all episodes air simultaneously. Gee, I wonder why. Could it possibly be that they gave up on it so badly and just dropped all episodes to get it out of the way? Maybe. Two, it's the first show to have mature audiences warning. I've, I've, I've understand that there's some bloody scenes, like especially when Kingpin beat a man, you know, so that's I think you're already getting mature audience warning. Otherwise, fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe will note it's much the same with an MCU girl boss diverse lead, a white male villain, and not much to latch on to in terms of audience interest. Yeah, I was right to avoid this. Yeah, I was pretty much right to avoid this. Diversely, this, this, this hatred of all things white men is just ridiculous, you know, but whatever. Okay, a bit of a, bit of a, a, bit of a, a um, history lesson here. The original character of Echo premiered in the relaunch Daredevil 1998 number 9, where David Mack, famous for his indie kabuki book, made an impressionistic book telling the origin of a new character whom the kingpin raised to kill Daredevil using the death of her real father as the reason to set her on a Marvel hero. Echo eventually learns Kingpin was the one to kill her father and instead vows to kill Kingpin instead of Daredevil. Now the thing about it is that in the comics, Echo's powers are actually kind of similar to like Taskmaster. Once she sees you do something, muscle memory and, and, and thing allow her to do it perfectly. Like she could watch you play the piano and play the piano just as well as you do, you know, or even better, depending on it. She could watch a person's fight moves and instantly through muscle memory, I think, copy it. Because this time when she was chasing Daredevil and the moves he was doing, she was doing as well. So, you know, the character in the comic books, no, notably the character in the comic book was never really all that famous Taskmaster and others, you know, surely did Eclipse her. But the power set and everything were pretty interesting, something you could, you could, um, you could, you could actually work into. Did they give that in the Echo series? Oh, hell no. Oh, God, no, not even, not even close. We continue on, eh? There's a dash of romance as Maya meets Matt Murdock in an elegant story with some fun rooftop fights before she eventually realizes it was the Kingpin who killed her father and not Daredevil leading to her shooting Kingpin and leaving him for dead. Okay. The first episode of the Disney Plus show follows a similar script. Yeah. Okay, let's read through it. Yeah? Without any of the character ties to Maya to Matt Murdock and Daredevil that made for a tug of the hard strings. Instead, they make Maya Lopez a big virtue signal about Native Americans living in Oklahoma. Yeah, they were heavy on that from what I understand. Have uh, I a mean, gen generic lost her mommy and blames herself backstory before sending her to New York to show how she is better than every man kingpin has at fighting even better than Daredevil before she decides to become Queen Pin herself. Yet, there was this clip shown online uh, in regards to the fight between Daredevil and, and Echo. And it looked so bad, fans were ripping it apart. Because in the Daredevil series on Netflix, the, one of the great things about it were the fight scenes. They were bloody, they were brutal, they were up close. That's it. This looked terrible. There were parts where he was literally waiting on her to attack him. You could see she swings something not even close to him. He goes flying. And there's this part where he jumps up in the air. She fires and gone point blank range at him and somehow misses. It was terrible. 
really really terrible and fans tore it apart and rightfully so the story revision is cringy more mc nonsense that that's destroyed them see over the last few years and their devil only has 90 seconds of screen time in the entire show i wonder if they had him do a walk of shame just like with she hulk hmm and I think well, I wonder if there's any update on the Daredevil Born Again series that they literally or I think they cancelled it or something so because that and all was garbage but MC will never learn. Fans are reacting online about Echo making fun of the Disney Plus show for the most part after lackluster fight scenes yep and generic feminists and anti-white plots have destroyed yet another Marvel character. I don't know who they'd be trying to appeal to with this stuff, but it never works. This is what so many people online had to say it. Um, Monitor Duty says this. Marvel Spotlight um, Echo features a chunky, overweight, deaf, amputee woman that stalemates Daredevil in a one-on-one -on -one fight. This is modern feminism and representation right here. She is a half-Hispanic, half-Indigenous, murderous criminal that, criminal that knows a, that knows ASL, so that should please Democrats. Now, you see, this is my thing. I, I'm not going to, I don't want to talk about anybody's body type, when they're, they're, I'm not going to get into that. But these things always kind of boil down to some kind of political thing, and that's, that's why I have a problem with it. I mean, instead of saying, you know, he, and he has a right to talk about it and, and all the things that they're trying to put here, because there are a lot of people who will come out and say, oh, people who, oh, you know, like the show, um, what, because she's a, um, because she's Hispanic and, 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 um, and um, Native American and she's deaf and she's an amputee and what, oh, you're just, well, you're just racist and sexist and all that. And, and my, my response is maybe, maybe people don't like the show because it's not good. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe people don't like the show because it's not good. You ever thought of that? But no. And then you know, again, I'm going to please the Democrats and all that. I think because that's really what you're going for with that. Next one says Marvel Studios. I mean, the show should have been called Kingpin, Wilson Fisk, and focused on the various lives Wilson Fisk impacts. Would have been a stronger anchor than focusing on a Charlie level Marvel character that isn't popular. Honestly, had they done a show about Kingpin, I think that would have been interesting because Vincent D'Onofrio's portrayal of Kingpin was in, in, um, in Daredevil and in Netflix was brilliant. And if they'd done that the same way, that would have really hit home. That would have been a series worth watching. Next one. Good Lord, Marvel's Echo owes me a handful of hours of my life back. We should form some kind of class action versus this donkey shit. Well, well he literally said what he wanted to do. Um, neurotic even, even um, said the MCU achieves maximum girl boss. Yeah, because... Again, as I say, her powers in, or should say powers, her abilities in the, um, in the comics is not, not, not what they're getting in this series. In this series, she could channel the abilities of her Native American female ancestors, and that's who all these people are. You understand me? So she put sort of Native American battle armor, and she could channel all their abilities and stuff. That's it. I mean, the, the, the literal muscle memory ability would have been much cooler. But no, you went with this. What did you really expect? Uh, over the show, Echo is somehow better than every other character at everything in a Mary's, in a Marvel Mary Sue extravaganza once more. What a shock. Making her an amputee and disabled on top of her already overly diverse origin and then having her be able to do moves better than Jackie Chan to fight off dozens of men on her own seemingly without any real powers is entirely nonsensical. Yeah, that's what it is because they virtue signal how they were pointed out. They automatically come out to the, 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 the tell you you are racist and sexist, uh, um, some kind of ableist, all kind, all kind of, of, of ace. That's what you are. The kingpin is made to look weak in the show. Well, they already, well, they already pretty much did that in the um, in the um, Hawkeye series, but you know, I guess it just continued on. And the viewer knows it's because he's the white man holding Echo down. Disney Plus and Marvel are still at peak MCU cringe, and with Young Avengers on the horizon, it doesn't look to be getting 
better anytime soon. Look, bottom line, this was always going to be terrible. Always going to be terrible. Echo is not a character anybody really likes or anybody really, really heard about. Her um, part in, in the Hawkeye series was just with this ridiculous nonsense. And what they did, what, what they've done to this show, this character is just criminal. But this is what the MCU has become. I called it early on that this was going to fail. And look, it's failed. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. You have a different opinion. I'd love to hear it. If you like the video, should I hit that thumbs up? Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell. You'll be notified every time I've a new video. I shall see you all next time. Take care.